This is Gary Hines of the three-time Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness. Please stand by for Season 8 of Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does.
grace, blessings, and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Jesus the Christ. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 8 and the new beginnings of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel radio talk show and kingdom our guest on this episode in season eight of let's talk to the lord is philanthropist gospel recording artist and author angela moss pool kingdom after her last single my help spent five weeks at number one on the billboard gospel indicator chart and 20 weeks in the top 30 on the national airplay chart peaking at 21, Angela Moss Pool teams up with super producer Fred Uncle Freddie Jerkins again and returns with an awesome tempo-driven song with a new sound titled Speak to the Mountain. Angela Moss Pool, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Apostle Ross. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be on your podcast today. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, please tell the kingdom more about you. Who is Angela Moss Poole? Angela Moss Poole is a child of God. I am a wife and a mother and a singer and a songwriter. I love the Lord. I love uh, teaching. I'm an educator. Um, I love to help people. And I was just a little girl who grew up in Girl Scouts and uh, grew up in Richmond Heights on 141st Lane and just glad to be here and letting God do whatever he wants to do with my life. Amen. And Sister Poole, please share your testimony of repentance and your journey to relationship with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. You know, as I think about my journey and how I came into relationship with Jesus, I'm just so humbled by his grace and mercy. You know, I became saved at a Francis Hunter revival. I don't know if you remember Francis, Charles and Francis Hunter. They were healing evangelists, and they were known for saying there are two kinds of people in the world, those who are saved and those who are about to be, which are you. And I'm so thankful for my mother. She took me to one of their revivals. And I must have been about 14 years old. And I I remember sitting near the front, and I saw my mother go up to the altar, and I just wanted to do whatever she was doing. And I just felt like, although I had been in church, although I was in Bible study, I just really had this sense of depth of my sin and and understanding of a need for repentance. And I just saw and felt that overwhelming, like the song says, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I went up to the altar with my mother. I said the sinner's prayer. And the more I started to repent of my sins and just surrender my life, I really felt a burden lifted off of me. You know, at that time, I was a middle child in a blended family in an abusive home with four other siblings, the only one with a different father. And I really felt um, different. I felt misplaced. Uh, misplaced. I endured um, different forms of abuse, and I carried a lot of shame. I had an eating disorder. I suffered from anxiety. And that's before we had official names, you know, for these things. And even though I grew up in church, I had a sense of God's presence. I always felt God was right there. But after that revival, I started to see the world in a different light, and I, I just started to really feel God's love for me personally and I began to love others. And that's when I started praying more, studying the word more. I, I grew in my relationship more, started to learn to trust God, you know, in my life more. Of course, I was 14. So, you know, I had, I, thankfully, I, I came into a relationship at an age where I could just trust him with everything and just yeah. really had, you know, involvement in youth ministries. You know, I went on to college. My Aunt Deborah introduced me to a lively, um, charismatic, creative, artistic community of faith of believers under the leadership of um, Drs. Kenneth and Helena Barrington. And they really supported me in my creative journey in songwriting and songwriting and being a psalmist and being in the choir. And I'm so grateful for that fellowship and the accountability that they provided. Pastor Helena went on to heaven this past October. And I can say today confidently that I'm a new 
creation in Christ. I'm living a life that's dedicated to serving him for his glory. I'm thankful for his grace and mercy. And I just pray, you know, to continue to grow in my relationship with him each day. Amen. And you kind of preluded into my next question, and what is your status now in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God? Well, I continue to be a member of Metropolitan Cathedral of Truth. It's still under the leadership of uh, Pastor Kenneth. Um, I, Because of the, the music career, um, I'm traveling a lot, so I'm not as active as I'd like to be in the choir, but I still sing in the choir when I'm in town. Um, right. I'm very active, um, you know, with the church, and I I'm, I'm, you know, make sure to stay accountable, um, you know, with the leadership. I, I participate in, you know, teachings and Bible studies, and just however my husband and I can stay um, connected with the youth and with music and with teaching and education, that really is my passion. We're actually building an institute for music business, And we're going to be um, having a private school with online programs and in-person programs teaching the business of music. We really want to advance the culture through music. Amen, amen, and amen again. Dr. Angela Moss Poole, please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Well, thank you, Apostle, for the opportunity. I really feel like it's important for people to understand, you know, what is the importance of the song of the Lord and what is it? What's the difference between a psalmist and a songwriter and what makes it so critical to the church and to the kingdom overall? People ask me a lot about, you know, how do you write these songs? How do you hear these songs? And I have to tell you, I say often that I, although I am a songwriter, I really don't like to call myself that because I feel like I'm just eavesdropping on angels. I really try to tune in to hear what angels and what God is singing over me and just take notes of that. You know, the Bible talks a lot about the importance of music in our worship and in our spiritual growth, especially the book of Psalms. It's just a collection of songs and poems that were used for worship, and we still use them in worship today. And really one of the recurring themes in in Psalms is the idea that you're hearing the song of the Lord, right? You're listening to and being open to the message that God is communicating through his music and lyrics. And so the role of a songwriter and a psalmist in the kingdom and the church is to be a vessel for his message. And so, you know, we, we might be creating music and lyrics, and we might think it's our song, but it should be inspired by God. It should communicate his truth. And this is a responsibility that should not be taken lightly because the music has the power to impact people's hearts and their minds. Yes. Psalms uh, 98 says, make a joyful noise, you know, to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous songs and praises. And the role of the, you know, songwriter and the psalmist is kind of the same. People ask me, what's the difference? And really a songwriter is a person who writes songs, typically maybe for popular music or for the radio. And songwriters make music that's for commercial release. And, you know, they may have lyrics and melodies. They may work, you know, independently or collaborate with other songwriters. But a psalmist is the person who writes religious or sacred music for worship purposes. And it really is the modern-day psalms, right? They're writing hymns. And if they were, if the book of Psalms was still going on and on today, we'd be adding in more psalms. Because yeah. the songs that psalmists write are, is for the work of, devotion and spiritual purposes. So there's some overlap. You know, you can be a Christian songwriter, um, but I really feel like a a psalmist is really hearing what God is saying to the church specifically for that house. And the songwriter could be, you know, more commercial. And people ask me, well, what is a song of the Lord? And and I, I just really believe that, you know, Psalms, the book of Psalms, is a collection of all these religious songs and hymns that the Jewish people And now we Christians use for worship. And Psalms 118, 14 through 15 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And that passage, you know, refers, is often referred to as the song of the Lord because it is a song of praise. But the song of the Lord also is that spontaneous worship that you might see people break out in, you know, in the midst of worship, you know, they might be playing instruments or singing or praying, and it might not be scripted, you know, it's just a free flowing expression of our praise and our love for God without a set order, without a set structure. And you see that because that's powerful and meaningful. That's how we can connect to God with a greater sense 
of creativity and freedom. And, you know, the Bible does also talk about God singing over us. In the Old Testament, in Zephaniah uh, 3 and 17, it says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. And so, again, we're reminded of how much God loves us, how much he protects us, how much he saves us, and that he is singing over us, right? He's, he's rejoicing over us. He wants to be in relationship with us. And so, you know, I just, I just feel like songwriting and being a psalmist is our way to connect with God and be closer to him and to be in a closer relationship with him. Colossians 3 and 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching yes, and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The Hallelujah. thankfulness in your hearts to God. You know, and King David wrote psalms. You know, Asaph, one of his Levites, wrote songs. Miriam sang songs. Moses sang songs. You know, and I just want, I just feel like no matter what your vocation is, you could be a, you could be a shepherd, you could be a king, you could be, you know, a leader in, in corporate America, you could be a homemaker, you can still sing songs unto the Lord. God can still use yes. you to hear the song of the Lord. And because it, it just shows that you have a close relationship with God. When David was just a shepherd boy, he was singing to God. When he became king, he was still singing to God. And so all that means is you're spending time in prayer, you're studying his word, you're being open to his leading and his guidance, and that you're being willing to be vulnerable and honest, right, and that you're able to sing to him just like John four twenty three says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him who are vulnerable, who are coming to him in truth. And so the, in, addition, in addition to creating good lyrics and music, the role of the songwriter and the psalmist is to lead others into worship. So you're going to use your music, God's music, as a way to draw you closer to God and then draw others closer to God so he can connect with everyone else also on a deeper level. So, you know, we want to, like Psalms 105 and 2 says, sing to him and sing praises to him. But tell of all his wondrous works. Tell everybody, right, what you're telling him in private. Express your love about how great he is and let everybody else know how great he is too. And that's why the songwriter and the psalmist is so important and so crucial that we're writing songs that honor and glorify God that can lead others in the congregation into that same worship and praise that we experience in our private time. So I just wanted to share that with you. Amen. Amen and amen again. Kingdom, our topics of discussion for this episode are hearing the song of the Lord and the role of the psalmist and the songwriters in the local church and in the kingdom of God. And kingdom, when it comes to hearing God's voice, that is one of the most complex topics that a born-again Christian encounters, especially in the early days of repentance. It can seem yeah. difficult to understand, so my responses are to those who find it difficult to understand. I want to shed light and leave you with a good understanding, because hearing God's voice is essential for our growth and maturity in him. So to begin, we were all created to be able to hear and communicate with God. The very day man became a living soul, when God breathed the breath of life, God's breath is God's spirit and gives life and is the essential ingredient. Kingdom God speaks to us in many different ways. Apostle Paul teaches through the books of Galatians how to walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit, which means He, God, the Holy Spirit, is leading and guiding you. The next essential step is discernment. The book of 1 John will train you to know when God is speaking and when the enemy is speaking through your flesh or someone else's flesh. It's our sinful flesh that severed our main direct line to God, and it was returned by the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. 
Now, the next step is obedience and begin to hear God. You must obey what he says. Disobedience causes you to go astray and away from God instead of the Holy Spirit leading you. You have now opened the door for demonic spirits to begin to crowd your mind and lead you to destruction. Kingdom, the way to grow and mature and strengthen your hearing is to posture yourself, which means to incline your ears to hear. And the opening of your ear gates are through fasting, prayer, worship, reading, and the study of God's Word. And then taking quiet time with God and daily talking to Him. God is omnipotent and can speak to millions at the same time. He is not limited to one person at the time. From these essentials, you will discover your purpose. For those who are songwriters, the, these essentials are the same. What difference is? What will differ is the songs that he gives. Kingdom, the melodies will all be downloaded by the Holy Spirit. What's being downloaded will vary due to the system you have been called to, whether that be church, praise, worship, instrumentals, hymns, prophetic worship, gospel, Christian, contemporary, traditional, rap, hip-hop, quartet, classical, and anthems. So please, once God reveals your system, learn your craft well so you don't limit God because the Holy Spirit is very intelligent and will release keys and chord structures alongside the melodies. Kingdom sight reading and a college education will expand your territory. Even a studio calling and system is not exempt from all I have just said. God can download words and melodies anytime, so live with a recording device near you at all all times. Of course, if you have a CD in the making, you are postured and asking God to give you anointed, fresh material, because this plays a major role in the role a psalmist and songwriter plays in the church and in the kingdom of God. Kingdom, each song, composition, and instrumental has a purpose. Some of those purposes are are but are not limited to worship, praise, war, healing, ministering, healing the natural body, as well as the spiritual healing, joy, expressions, presentations, to dance or to shout in the spirit, to bring unity, to bring hope, testimony, encouragement, confirmation, a word of knowledge, peace, to bring repentance, and to cultivate the ground, which is the soil, the heart, which is us, to hear God's word when it's preached or spoken, and to strengthen our relationship with God. Kingdom music and songs does everything but take the place of our Bibles. The psalmist prepares the mind frame of the congregation to receive from God. Songs, psalmists, and writers demonstrate our love for Christ by sharing the gospel of salvation to the entire world and the power that the gospel has to change humanity. Dr. Angela Moss Poole, please give the final words on our discussion, hearing the song of the Lord and the role the psalmist and songwriters play in the church and in the kingdom of God. The role of the songwriter and the psalmist is critical because it's the role of leading others in worshiping. And so through the words and music of the songwriter and the psalmist, just as you said, Apostle, they help to create the atmosphere of reverence and awe in the presence of God, and they encourage others to offer their praise to God. Look at the examples of David, Miriam, Paul, and Silas. They show the power of worship, 
how we can transform circumstances and bring God's intervention into our lives. So the songwriter and the psalmist, they serve as a bridge between God and the people. And so overall, hearing the song of the Lord, you know, it, it's important, it's rewarding, but you've got to be open to God's leading. And you've got to use the music as a tool to communicate his truth and his love so we can help others to grow in their faith and draw closer to him. Amen. Angela Moss Poole, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. I am Angela Moss Poole. I'm a singer-songwriter, an educator, a wife and mother, and a child of God. You can find me on all of my socials at Angela Moss Poole. My website is AngelaMossPoole.com. I look forward to connecting with you. For booking, you can email contact at AngelaMossPool.com. Amen. And please tell us about the music being featured during this podcast. We just heard my help, and we're getting ready to hear Speak to the Mountain. Well, I'll tell you, my help was another example of hearing the Lord and, and using the Scripture, studying the Scripture. That was just Psalms. 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. And the next song that you're about to hear, Speak to the Mountain, is based on that passage in Luke. You can speak to this mountain and say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. It just takes faith the size of a mustard seed. And so we believe God can do anything with your faith, but you've got to speak to that mountain. And how may the kingdom purchase your music and support your ministry? Oh, thank you, Apostle. All of my music is available on all digital platforms. You can find it on Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Tidal. And there are people who still want a physical CD. If that's you, you can find it on my website at AngelaMossPool.com. We will mail you a physical CD because everybody doesn't do the digital thing. I get it. And some people still want to pop it in their car. So we wanted to make sure there's a, a physical CD available for you on my website, AngelaMossPool.com. And Kingdom, the music of Angela Moss Pool is in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcast, iHeart Radio, including the iHeart Radio on your Roku. Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from www.speaker.com. Please don't forget the apostrophe in Let's. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time from KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and at 11 a.m. every Saturday morning from SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Stream us 24-7 from TheWeekendChannel.tv. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website Let's talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones found under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. Kingdom, you may now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, and Alexa will play Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord is your 24-hour station for talk shows, gospel news, radio interviews, and and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, authored by my sister, Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and all digital stores and outlets. Lord, give me another chance. Featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd are available under Apostle Johnny Ross. And Remember Now Thy Creator, featuring King David the Vessel, a new dual and doctrine, is listed under Minister John E. Ross. You can now listen to our radio station on your Roku under the My Tuner application on your Roku. Then let's talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Station. So, Kingdom Un. Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross 
under a open heaven. In Yeshua Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. my story of my God's amazing grace. I don't look like what I've been through. You can't see it on my face. It don't mean I don't have battles, but I know they're already won. Because God has given me power. It's right here in my tongue. Just speak to the Lost your job or the doctor called me back.